All right, here we go. Let's try some. So we're going to calculate some definite integrals. And let's just remember what the process is. So there's kind of two steps here. First, we get the antiderivative of our function. And then we evaluate that antiderivative um, in accordance with those limits of integration. So it's top minus bottom. All right. So let's start with the first one here. We're integrating the function x squared over the interval from 1 to 2. And let's see how to calculate this definite integral. So first step, we want the antiderivative. So we're just looking at our function here right now, integral of x squared. What's the antiderivative of x squared? Well, power rule. What's the antiderivative of x squared? Well, our variable is x. Add 1 to the exponent, which takes us up to 3. And then we take that new exponent, flip it, put it in front. So 1 third goes in front there. Power rule. That's our antiderivative. And we found the antiderivative. So notice the integral sign and the dx. We're not going to write those anymore. What we're going to write now instead is this vertical line. And we're going to evaluate from x equals 1 to x equals 2. So this is the first step. Get the antiderivative. All right, there we go. We have our antiderivative. Now we're going to do the evaluation. So that, that comes into the second step. So we're going to take this top number, 2, plug it in. So we get 1 third times 2 cubed. That's what we get when we plug in the top number. And then we take our lower number here, the lower limit, plug it in, and we get 1 third times 1 cubed, and then we subtract. And this actually simplifies down. <clears throat> but the main step here was we do our evaluation second. Not too bad. This is our answer. But it's, it's usually helpful to try and simplify at least a little bit. So this becomes 8 thirds, this becomes 1 third, and 8 thirds you know, 8 over 3 minus 1 over 3 is 7 over 3. <clears throat> so there we go. We've calculated this definite integral using the fundamental theorem of calculus. So let's just notice a few things. First thing, our answer is a number. Okay. We'll see what this, again, we're just seeing, we're getting practice right now just calculating these definite integrals. We'll see what this number actually means. We'll see some interpretations of it later on in future lessons. Right now we're just seeing how to calculate it. And then notice when we actually found the antiderivative right here, this 1 third x cubed, we didn't use plus c because if we had, we would have had a plus c right here and we would have had a plus c right here and those just would have gotten canceled off. So we didn't use plus c for our antiderivative. Again, it's not technically wrong. We could have but it would have just gotten canceled off. Um, all right, not too bad. Now, one thing we want to note is the function little f of x equal to x squared is continuous on the interval from 1 to 2. So the function we're integrating has to be continuous, has to be continuous everywhere in between those two endpoints, one and two. So it has to be continuous on that entire interval, which it is. X squared's a polynomial power function. You know, it's it's it behaves nicely. All right, let's try another one. Let's look at this definite integral where we're integrating the function e raised to the power t, and we're integrating from negative 1 to positive 1. So again, we want to just note the function we're integrating here is e raised to the power t. We just want to kind of keep track. Yeah, it is continuous. Exponential functions are always continuous. And it's not that it's just continuous at the endpoints here. We want to think of this as we're going from negative 1 all the way to positive 1. We're looking at an entire interval. So we're kind of investigating this exponential function over an interval here. That's really what we're 
we're kind of doing with these definite integrals. Okay, so how do we calculate the definite integral? Well, first step, find the antiderivative. Now, it's not going to look like we're going to do anything, but we actually do. So what is the antiderivative of the natural exponential function? It's the natural exponential function. So that's why we talk about it in calculus, because these natural exponential functions behave very nicely with antiderivatives and derivatives. So they're, it's its own antiderivative. Um, so we have our antiderivative. Then we're going to evaluate it from negative 1 to positive 1. So we're going to evaluate this antiderivative. We use this big vertical line to indicate evaluate. And notice that when, once we have our antiderivative, we no longer write the integral sign or this dt. So those were kind of those two pieces of notation there are telling us really find the antiderivative of this function with respect to variable t. And then once we actually find the antiderivative, which is what we did right here, we no longer write them. Okay, so we found our antiderivative. Now we plug in. So the top number goes in first. We get e raised to the power 1. Then we take our, our lower number here, the minus 1, plug it in. So we get e raised to the minus 1, and then we subtract. And, yeah. So it's a good looking answer there. And maybe the only thing we do to simplify this is we don't normally write e, we don't normally write an exponent of 1. So I might simplify this to just e minus e raised to the negative 1. And that's perfectly fine. This is a number. Even though it's not as nice and clean of a number as this 7 over 3, this is perfectly good. So this is where I would stop. This is a, this is a correct answer. So when you're doing these, you know, it's fine to leave them as fractions or in terms of e or other or in terms of pi, things like that. You don't necessarily have to write it as a decimal. All right. So here's a couple fun ones. Let's try one more of these just to get that practice. So here we go. We have the function 1 over x squared. And we want to calculate the antiderivative from negative 1, or we want to calculate the definite integral of this function from negative 1 to positive 3. So how are we going to do it? Well, what's kind of one thing we always want to keep track of is we look at our function, 1 over x squared, and we're interested in how this function behaves over this entire interval. And we're going from negative 1 to positive 3. And if we look at this, this function, there's division, and there's division by 0. And that happens inside the interval. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to answer this one. So we cannot use the fundamental theorem of calculus, part 2, to answer this question. And the reason is because 1 over x squared is not continuous on the interval from minus 1 to positive 3. There's a discontinuity somewhere in that interval, which happens in this case at x equals 0. So this is something we want to just kind of keep in mind if we're integrating a function, if we're calculating a definite integral, um, we just want to keep in mind, is the function continuous? And specifically, is it continuous on this entire, uh, on the entire interval? In this case, from negative 1 to 3. We're going to be able to answer this question. We'll see how to answer it in, in Calc 2. So there's, there's much more going on behind the scenes here. So we will eventually be able to answer this just right now we want to keep in mind the continuity of our function over the interval. All right, so we've seen some little examples for calculating definite integrals. We'll practice some more, but next we're going to look at some properties. So we'll see you there.